All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to find the derivative of 10 times e to the power of x. And so in order to find this derivative, we're going to need to use the derivative rule for the exponential function e to the power of x. And we know that the derivative of that function is itself. The derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. And so for this derivative right here, let's start by pulling this constant multiple out, and we'll have that this is equal to 10 times the derivative d dx of e to the power of x, which as we can see from this rule is just equal to e to the power of x. And so this is equal to 10 times e to the power of x. And so in this case, this is the derivative of this function, and they are the same function, but it is still the derivative of this function. Next, let's look at the derivative of e to the power of 2x cubed. How are we going to find this derivative? Well, we're going to need to use the chain rule version of this derivative rule, where we have e to the power of u, where u is a function of x, and the derivative of that function of e to the power of u is equal to e to the power of u, that same function, times the derivative of u with respect to x. And so if we use that rule in this scenario, our function u would be 2x cubed. And so the derivative here would be equal to this function right here, e to the power of 2x cubed. So we'll have e to the power of 2x cubed. And then we will multiply by the derivative of that exponent, which is that function of u. And so we will take the derivative of 2x cubed, which if we use the power rule for derivatives, we will multiply this exponent down. So we'll have two times three, and that is equal to six. And then we will have x to the power of two because we will subtract one from the exponent, right? Three minus one is two, and so we have two in that exponent. All right, and so then if we simplify, this is equal to six x squared times e to the power of two x cubed. And this will be the derivative of e to the power of two x cubed. All right, let's look at some more examples. So here we wanna find the derivative of two times e to the power of the square root of x. And so in this case, we're going to need to use the chain rule because we have a function other than x as our exponent of e. And so what I'm going to do first is rewrite this function so that the square root of x is x to the one half power because that is the same thing, right? Taking x to the one half power is the same as taking the square root of it. And so I'm going to rewrite this and we'll have a derivative of two times e to the power of x to the one half power. Okay, and so then if we take the derivative of this, it's going to be equal to two times e to the power of x to the one half power, right? We just rewrite this function. So we will have e to the power of x, the one half power, and then we will multiply by the derivative of that exponent. And so the derivative of x to the one half power, if we use the power rule for derivatives, we will have one half times x to the power of one half minus one, right? We multiply one half down, and then subtract one from the exponent, so we have one half minus one. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to two times e to the power of the square root of x, right? I'm just gonna rewrite this one half power now to be back to the square root of x. And then we will multiply by one half times x to the negative one half power, right? One half minus one is negative one half. And so then you'll notice that this two and this one half will cancel each other out to just be one, so we can cross those out. And so then what we'll have is that this is equal to e to the power of the square root of x times x to the negative one half power. And so now we can rewrite this again if we move this x to the negative one half power to the denominator, and that will give it a positive exponent. And so we'll have that this is equal to e to the power of the square root of x divided by x to the positive one half power. But that could also be rewritten to just be the square root of x. And so our final answer will be that this is equal to e to the power of the square root of x divided by the square root of x. And that is the derivative of this function. All right, so next we have y is equal to sine of e to the power of x, and we wanna find y prime, or the derivative of this function. And so in this case, this is going to require using the chain rule because we have a composite function where our outside function is the sine function and the inside function is e to the power of x. And so in order to find y prime, we will have to start by taking the derivative of the outside function. And so the derivative of sine is equal to cosine, and so we will have cosine of that same inside function, right? We do not change that, but then we will multiply by the derivative of that inside function, 
and the derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. And so then this would be our derivative, y prime, but I'm just gonna reorder what is being multiplied here, and we'll have that y prime is equal to e to the power of x times cosine of e to the power of x, and that will be my final answer, or the derivative of this function. For our next example, we have f of x is equal to x squared times e to the power of 4x. And we want to find f prime of x, or the first derivative of this function. And so in order to find the derivative of this function, we are going to need to use the product rule because we have a product of two functions, right? We have x squared times e to the power of 4x. So our first function is x squared, and our second function that it's being multiplied by is e to the power of 4x. And so if you don't quite remember the product rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference as we go through this derivative. But if we use that rule, we will have that f prime of x is equal to our first function, x squared, times the derivative of our second function. And so we'll start by just rewriting e to the power of 4x, right? So we'll have e to the power of 4x, but then we need to multiply by the derivative of that exponent. And so the derivative of 4x is just 4 because the derivative of x to the first power is just going to be equal to its coefficient, and so that is 4. Okay, and so now we're done with taking the derivative of our second function, and so now we will add that to our second function, e to the power of 4x times the derivative of our first function, x squared. And so the derivative of x squared, if we use the power rule for derivatives, will be 2x, right? We multiply that 2 down and subtract 1 from the exponent, so we have 2 times x to the power of 1. And so if we simplify, we'll bring this 4 out to the front, and so we'll have that this is equal to 4x squared times e to the power of 4x plus 2x times e to the power of 4x, so we will have 2x times e to the power of 4x. And so now this is a perfectly acceptable answer for the derivative of this function, but I'm going to do one more thing here to make it a little bit nicer, and that is that I notice that each of these terms has a common factor of 2x times e to the power of 4x, right? I could divide a 2x times e to the power of 4x out of this term and out of this term. We could pull a factor of 2 out of this 4, we could pull a factor of x out of this x squared, and we have e to the power of 4x here, as we do over here. And so if I pull this out of each of these terms, we will have that this is equal to two times x times e to the power of four x times two x plus one, right? If we pull out two out of this four, we're left with two. If we pull an x out of this x squared, we're left with just x. And if we pull out e to the power of four x, it's just gone, and so we'd be multiplying by one. And then we pulled all of this out of this term, and so we're just left with one. Right, and so this is going to be my final answer, or the derivative of our function f of x. Next, we have that y is equal to e to the power of x plus x quantity squared, and we want to find dy dx, or the derivative of this function. And so how are we going to find the derivative of this function? Well, we're going to need to use the chain rule because we have a composite function where the outside function is this quantity squared, and the inside function is e to the power of x plus x. And so if we're going to find dy dx, we will first need to take the derivative of the outside function using the power rule. So we will multiply this power of two down and subtract one from the exponent. So we will have two times e to the power of x plus x to the power of one, but we don't really need to write that. But do remember to keep that inside function the same as what is up here and then we will multiply by the derivative of that inside function. And so we will multiply by the derivative of e to the power of x, which is just e to the power of x, and then we will add the derivative of x, which is just one, because one is the coefficient of x, and when you take the derivative of x to the first power, it's just equal to that coefficient. All right, and so then we're done with the chain rule, and this is actually already in its simplest form. I suppose you could foil these two quantities if you wanted to, you can multiply their terms together, but ultimately this is going to be the simplest form of the answer, and so I'm just going to box that in and say that this is the derivative of this function. All right, so here we have the function h of x is equal to e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x divided by e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x and we want to find h prime of x, or the derivative of this function. 
And so in order to find the derivative of this function, we are going to want to use the quotient rule because we have a quotient of two separate functions, right? We have one function in the numerator here and another function in the denominator here. And so since we have this quotient of two functions, we will need to use that quotient rule. And so if you don't quite remember the quotient rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference as we go through this derivative. But if we use that rule, we'll have that h prime of x is equal to our denominator function or the bottom function, e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x times the derivative of the numerator or top function. And so we'll start by taking the derivative of e to the power of x, which we know is e to the power of x, and then we will subtract the derivative of e to the power of negative x, which we will start by just rewriting that function, but then we need to multiply by the derivative of that exponent since it's not just x. And so the derivative of negative x is just negative one. And so then we will subtract the numerator function, e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x times the derivative of the denominator function. And so we will have the derivative of e to the power of x, which we know is e to the power of x, plus the derivative of e to the power of negative x, which we just did when we took the derivative of the numerator, but we'll do it again. We will have e to the power of negative x times the derivative of negative x, that exponent, which again is negative one. And then all of this is going to be divided by the denominator function squared. And so we will have e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x squared. Okay, and so then if we simplify this by multiplying this negative one by this term and this negative one over here by this term, we will have that this is equal to e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x times e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x because this negative one will make this term positive. So we have plus e to the power of negative x and then we will subtract e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x times e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x, right? This negative one times this term will make this negative. And so this will be divided by that same denominator of e to the power of x plus e to the negative power of x squared. Okay, and so then if we clean up our work here, the next thing that we are going to want to do is to multiply these two quantities and these two quantities, right? We're not gonna be able to cancel out any of these quantities because even though this quantity is the same as what is in the denominator, we do not have e to the power of x plus e to the negative power of x over on this side, right? So you cannot cancel out anything. We are going to have to try to simplify the numerator as best as we can. And so let's multiply each of these quantities together. Let's FOIL them. And so this will be equal to e to the power of x times e to the power of x, and that is going to be e to the power of 2x, not x squared, right? If we have x squared times x cubed, we add those exponents, and the answer is x to the fifth power, right? We do not multiply them and get x to the sixth power, we add the exponents. And so that is the same for e to the power of x when you multiply it by e to the power of x we add the exponents, and so we have 2x, not x squared. We do not multiply x times x, we add x and x to get 2x, all right? And so then we'll multiply e to the power of x times e to the power of negative x, and so once again, we will add those exponents, and so x and negative x are going to cancel out and be zero, so we will have plus e to the power of zero, and then we'll move on to our second term here. We're gonna multiply this term by each of these terms, and so we're gonna have e to the power of negative x times e to the power of x. And so if we add those exponents, we will have negative x and x, which is also zero. And so we will have plus e to the power of zero again. And then we will multiply this term by this term. And so we have e to the power of negative x times e to the power of negative x. And so we'll add those exponents together and have e to the power of negative two x. And then we will subtract these two quantities multiplied together. And so we'll have e to the power of x times e to the power of x, which is going to be e to the power of 2x. And then we'll have e to the power of x times negative e to the power of negative x. And so the powers of x and negative x will cancel out to zero. So we will have minus e to the power of zero. And then we'll move on to this term. We will multiply this by e to the x. And so we'll have negative e to the negative x times e to the x. And so we will have minus e to the power of zero because the exponents are negative x and x, and so if we add those together, we get zero again. 
And then finally, we'll multiply negative e to the power of negative x times negative e to the power of negative x. And so these two negatives will cancel out to be positive, and so we'll have positive e to the power of negative 2x if we add those exponents together. All right, and so that is all of our terms that result from multiplying these quantities together. And so this will still be divided by that same denominator of e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x squared. And so then I'm going to distribute this negative to each of the terms in this quantity. And so if I do that, this term will become negative, these two terms will become positive, and this term will become negative. And so I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to erase these parentheses, and then these will become positive, and this positive term will become negative. All right, and so then if we look at these terms that we have here, I see that we have a positive e to the power of 2x and a negative e to the power of 2x. And so those are going to cancel out to be zero. And then I also see that we have a positive e to the power of negative 2x and a negative e to the power of negative 2x. And so those are also going to cancel out to just be zero. And so all we're left with is four of these e to the power of zero terms. And so remember that anything to the power of zero is just one. And so we have one plus one plus one plus one. And so we have four ones. And so all we're left with in the numerator here is four. And so if I clean up my work, we can write our final answer that h prime of x is equal to four divided by e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x squared. And this is the derivative h prime of x of our original function. Let's look at one more example for this video. All right, so here we have the function f of x is equal to three times e to the power of sine x plus five times e to the power of cosine x, and we wanna find f prime of x. And so in order to find the derivative of this function, we just have to take the derivative of each of these terms here. And so f prime of x will be equal to three times the derivative of e to the power of sine x, which remember when you have e to the power of some other function that isn't x, we will first rewrite that function. So we will have e to the power of sine x, and then we will multiply by the derivative of that function in the exponent. And so the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and so that's what we will multiply by. And then we will add this to five times the derivative of e to the power of cosine x. And so to take the derivative of that function, we will start by just rewriting the function. So we will have e to the power of cosine x, and then we will multiply by the derivative of that exponent, or the derivative of cosine x, which we know is negative sine x. All right, and so now all we have to do here to finish off this derivative is to simplify anything that we can simplify. And in this case, the only thing I see that we can do is bring this negative from this negative sine x to the front of this term. And so we will have that this is equal to three times e to the power of sine x times cosine x, minus five times e to the power of cosine x times sine x. All right, and so then that is the final answer or the derivative of that function f of x. Okay, and so with that, that was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now, so I will see you next time.